Joining me now is Eugene Robinson, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist with The Washington Post, Juanita Tolliver, the host of Cricket Media's What a Day podcast and an MSNBC political analyst, and Mark Thompson, radio host, reverend, and civil rights activist. And he is live in Nashville. So, Mark, you're in Nashville. Kathy just told us that the feeling on the ground is one of celebration and jubilation. It, can you concur? As, as a matter of fact, good evening, everyone. Uh, right behind me, Justin Jones is being sworn in. The Metro Nashville Council has restored him. Uh, he is now being sworn in here on the steps of the Capitol, just behind me, so you can hear the people uh, cheering. And the moment he's sworn in, he's going to go and take his seat at his legislative desk. So this is a big victory. The word is right is jubilant. You know, last week uh, they sent these two uh, gentlemen home, uh, but it's Easter weekend. Uh, and so they've been resurrected. They're back in their seats. Uh, and whatever the Republicans here were up to has been has been thwarted for now. So, Gene, this is an Easter miracle of sorts, the resurrection of the political careers of these two men or what will be two men if Memphis does the same thing. What's your reaction to the reappointment of Justin Jones and the possible reappointment of Justin Pearson later this week? Well, Justin Jones and Justin Pearson are now um, mega political stars in this country, um, uh, both for who they are and how eloquent they are and how powerful they are, but, but for what was done to them. And so what did, what did Tennessee Republicans accomplish last week with their anti-democratic and, and openly racist action in expelling the two of them? It it managed to elevate them and elevate their voices in, in a way that they could not have done uh, absent that action. Uh, it, so it Eugene, was, it was can, can I stop you just for a the minute? most We're, counterproductive thing. Eugene, can I stop mm -hmm. you for a minute? Justin Pearson is speaking. Let's listen in and hear what he has to say. Eugene, what do you make of this? Is this a victory for the people? Well, yes, I think it is a victory for the people, it's a victory for democracy. And let's let's remember what the issue was here. They they were expelled for having participated in a protest that was over gun violence. Uh, and following that that horrific shooting in Nashville, at, at the school shooting, um, killed six innocent people, in, including three nine-year-olds. Well, what happened today? Uh, another mass shooting, this time at a bank, this time in Kentucky, the next door state. Uh, so this is a this is a victory, not just for Justin Jones and one hopes soon for Justin Pearson, uh, but for all who are um, who are desperately uh, concerned about mm -hmm. this issue and who are tired of thoughts and prayers and who, who finally want some action on gun violence. We well, can definitely see that there, the mood here is really expansive. It's not just about Justin Jones, but about these broader issues and the anti-democratic nature of that expulsion. But Juanita, Democrats have made much of this over the course of the weekend, talking about the anti-democratic nature of these expulsions. Will there be consequences for Republicans, whether in Tennessee or on the national scale? Will this lead to changes in policies around gun violence? Will there be more discussion about the efforts to disrupt and distort democracy? All of this seems on the table here. All of it's on the table and all of it should be considered. I've seen calls for DOJ investigations even into the handling of this by the Republicans in the Tennessee state legislature. And what I appreciate also is the outreach from the White House uh, and Vice President Harris visiting Nashville, meeting with the Tennessee Three, talking to them and the local community about the importance of this moment. Because as she said while she was in Nashville, this is about the fact that it's wrong to turn off the mics of individuals who are 
are fighting for change, fighting for gun laws to protect their communities. This, that's completely anti-democratic, and the vice president rightly called it out. They also got a chance to Skype with President Biden, and, and I think it's, it's fitting for the White House to do that because they recognize that these three legislators, two of whom are very young, 27 and 28 mm -hmm. years old, are on the front lines of this issue, and they're going to continue to be on the front lines. Even today, there was a mass shooting in this country, and so the fight absolutely must continue and recognize the power of the voices in these state legislatures. So I do think that Democrats have been explicitly clear in recent years, at least, about investments in these races at the local and state mm -hmm. levels, because that is all an ultimate battleground for a lot of policies, not just gun form, gun reform, but also, as we've seen on abortion bans across the right. country, that this is a key area for investment and long-term investment. But I, I'm really excited for this outcome for Representative Jones, and I hope to see the same for Representative Pearson. And I, I posted it, but I'll say it again. This is the only fitting response to the disrespect and the racism that they were subjected to last week. We're seeing live footage of Justin Jones, who's just been reappointed to the state legislature. The Nashville Metro Council has reappointed him here. Um, Mark, let me ask you really quickly. Um, Justin Jones spoke with MSNBC's Reverend Al Sharpton over the weekend. And here's what the Reverend had to say. What the Republicans attempted to do here in Tennessee was crucify democracy. Um, and instead, what they have done is resurrect a movement led by a multiracial coalition of young people to really transform our state and in so doing transform the nation. The expulsion vote set a very dangerous precedent. It was extreme. It reminded us of days in our, in our history that we don't want to go back to. And it was really an assault on um, the, the vision of, of our future that these young people are trying to push for, which is a future free from these mass shootings, a future free from the terror of, of, of weapons of war on our street. My apologies, Mark, that was Justin Jones, but what's your reaction? Um, have the Republicans essentially reintroduced a media star here, someone who can command the national stage on these issues? Well, I think that's absolutely true, but first we just want to get an update. This is Representative Harold Love from the Tennessee House. Representative Love, you, you, you are assured that when he walks in, the speaker will allow him to take his seat. Yes, sir. We have the oath of office coming out now. The judge is coming out to swear him in as soon as that's done. It signs the oath to be back in the state representative. Okay. All right. So, so that's that's uh, that's 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 good news. Calling me. Um, so that, that's uh, that's good news. Um, and this is a big moment, as Eugene said. Eugene and and well, I need to know this well. You know this too. Um, they've made both Justins an overnight sensation. They have. They once, didn't realize once, what they did. Mark, can I interrupt you for a second? Um, we have sure, sure, sure. Uh, word that Delicia Porterfield, who's the Nashville Metro Councilwoman who nominated Jones for reappointment on the floor sure. of the council, is available to speak with us. So let's hear from her. Okay. Councilwoman Porterfield, how are you? Um, what does this accomplishment mean to you? This is huge. This is very, very huge. This is a step in the right direction. Here in Tennessee, those of us that have been on the ground, whether we're elected officials, whether we're in the nonprofit space or the advocacy space, we know the assaults on democracy that we face every single day in Tennessee. And today we sent a very strong message to the state as well as across the country that we will not tolerate threats to our democracy. Okay, Councilwoman, what message does this send beyond we will not tolerate threats to our democracy? Um, how do you expect the GOP to respond to your response here? Will there be movement on gun control? Will there be movement on other priorities that the Democratic caucus in Tennessee has tried to advance? You know, that is the hope, and the people have already stated that they're going to keep coming out. You know, we've been out here multiple times since the Covenant shooting demanding gun control, demanding common sense gun reform, and we're going to continue showing up until we move the needle and put the pressure to let them know this is the will of the people, and we're going to continue to fight for the will of the people. Thank you, Councilwoman Porterfield. Um, we're going to go back to our guests. Um, Juanita, can I ask you a question here? Um, how does this all shake out on the national field? Like We have so many things going on here. Does this really catch any fire for what's going on in the national politics? I think it absolutely does. I think the expectation is high uh, for action, but also to respect young people and young activists' voice in this entire process. Because what we see here is young people like Representative Jones and Representative Pearson leading this fight with the advocates behind them, because that's what started all of this. Remember, teenagers and young people and their parents were going to the Tennessee State House in order to have their voices heard after the shooting last week. And so, 
I think that is absolutely something that's going to reverberate across the country with national, uh, with young voters feeling empowered by this, and they are going to want to be heard at and across the country at the at the state and federal levels. And so, so Juanita, I fully we are expect looking, Juanita, right now we are looking at live footage of the state legislature in Nashville, the capital of Tennessee, where they're about to gavel in their session, and presumably Justin Jones, once he is resworn in, will be joining them as a member of this caucus. Let's look for a minute. Served, did not let her illness hold her back during many of the years of that right, service. They seem to be doing a lot of council business at this indeed. point, um, but they are going to <laughs> be sure, going back into session and Justin Jones will be joining them. But as you say, this is a tremendous victory for the youth vote. Um, certainly makes clear right. the importance of youth voices. Um, Eugene, can I come back to you for a minute? Um, what does all of this say about the politics of race in all of this? I mean, we know famously from last week that Gloria Johnson, who was one of the Tennessee three, was the only one who did not get expelled from the state legislature, but her two black male colleagues or two young black male colleagues were. Mm -hmm. um, can Tennessee make the point that this was a race neutral kind of event or is it clear on the face of this what really yeah. happened here? No, when three people do the same thing, the exact same thing, and and the response is, uh, you two young black fellas, get out of here, and, and you know, now you're expelled, uh, but the nice white lady can stay. That it, that's not hard to hard to understand, and that's hard to get around in, in terms of not just the optics but the reality of what was done. So yes, uh, the, the the racism was shocking, I think, to a lot of people. Um, but the the other thing that this does, that, that this whole episode Eugene, does, do you see Justin Jones being sworn in here? Mm -hmm. Can we hear that? Yeah, yeah, it's an amazing, it's a, it's an amazing um, sight to see, uh, and heartening. And and what I think this does is it helps elevate guns and gun violence, um, elevate the issue to where abortion is now. You know, the the Dobbs mm -hmm. decision striking down Roe v. Wade made abortion a galvanizing issue for progressive and moderate uh, voters across the country. Uh, and I think gun violence is that kind of issue now, and this helps elevate that issue. So, on point that, very, uh, Eugene, on that point about gun violence, um, this is a point that minority communities have made over and over again, that gun violence is perhaps worth visited on those minority communities. And the communities that were represented by Pearson and Jones are large metropolitan areas where there are enormous populations of minorities. Is this part of the calculus here? Um, are these individuals not just people who are being expelled because of their alleged disrespectful conduct, but because they also represent sectors of the population that object to some of these planks in the GOP platform in Tennessee? Well, that's certainly the message that's being sent. The message that was sent to the constituents of Justin Jones and Justin Pearson was, we don't care about you. We don't care if your voices are heard. Um, we're going to do what we want to do. That's what the Tennessee Republicans okay. said. And the Nashville City Council has responded to that and said, no, uh, we, what we do want those constituents' voices heard. Uh, and I, I expect um, that Justin Pearson will probably be reinstated as well. So, Mark, can I go to you? Um, the mood in Nashville right now is obviously jubilant. What is the mood like in Memphis? Um, is it expected that they will reinstate Justin Pearson? And will there be similar celebrations in that major metropolitan area in Tennessee as well? Yeah, well, that, that is the plan for him to actually uh, be sworn in well, he was just sworn in, as you just saw, and for him now to be reseated. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip my camera so you all can actually see what's going on right now. Um, we were about to go into the chamber. That's what it looks like. You're and, right there. Uh, come on, Justin. Um, so in, in just a moment, and this apparently is a declaration that's being prepared, a document. Um, if you all can see, this is the oath of office signed by the chancellor. So this is, we're seeing this history right now in real time. Well, I have not been able to take a, a step inside the Capitol. This is um, the signing of the oath of office with 113 yeah. General Assembly. And the crowd erupts. He's original, so it has to be signed uh, twice. Is he is signing his official oath of office. And then, and then it'll be, a, it'll be official. And um, 
then the plan would be for him to actually go in to the chamber. But as you can hear, it's jubilant. It is an, an incredible feeling out here. And again, this, this is the issue. It's not any other issue. This is about gun violence. And that's why you see such a diverse crowd. You notice over here, Gloria Johnson over here, a little bit to my right. There's Gloria Johnson. She's here to walk him in. They're together. Justin Pearson is here. So, hey, y'all, what's going on? So, we going up in here. Uh, <laughs> and and it, truly, it truly here. is a multiracial coalition, Mark. I mean, this is like Absolutely. there are people of every age, every ethnic group. But this is truly a multiracial democracy in action. Yeah, no, it, it certainly is. And that's because gun violence touches everyone. And what the Republicans uh, didn't expect was this type of reaction, this type of backlash. You could not get a flight into Nashville today. The masses were, were coming here. And um, as, a, as a result, I mean, I think the Republicans came to their senses. They couldn't block them out. They just couldn't do it. Uh, because people were going to converge on Nashville. We were on the verge of, of you know, literally probably having another million man march here in Nashville. So <laughs> um, it, this is big. And uh, as Representative Love said to us uh, uh, earlier, I mean, they appealed to the, uh, to the speaker's uh, sensibilities and said to him, you don't want this smoke. This is, this is bigger than you can, uh, than you can imagine. Justin, ju Justin, Justin, you're live on MSNBC. Say a word to Hi, the nation, Justin please. Jones. Um, congratulations on your reappointment. It would not be in. Um, what happened on last Thursday was, was an act of violence against democracy. Today, we are trying to restore our control of our democracy. It's being led by young people. And, and today is a day. Um, but we know that there's many other steps to take. Get away with it. We thought that it would happen in the culture of silence without a challenge. The people are speaking up, and we are saying, you know, sending a clear message that that's not going to happen. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Justin. That is Representative Justin Jones, who's been sworn back into the state legislature by a vote of the National Metro Council, reiterating that this is a victory for young people and the people of Nashville. Um, Juanita, one last question for you. Um, there's so much going on here, but this is just another chapter in the story. We still have the special election that's going to be held that will formally reinstate these two men if indeed they are going to be long-term representatives in the state legislature. What do you expect from that special election in Tennessee? I expect overwhelming turnout because just as Representative Jones just said, the people are watching and the people are showing up. And let's be real, Republicans were banking on them not showing up. Republicans were banking on the idea that they could expel these two black members and not have any repercussions or any consequences as a result. But the people have made it explicitly clear that they're going to show up for these representatives the exact same way that those representatives showed up for them and the fight will continue. So I'm expecting high turnout at historic rates, not only in Nashville, but also in Shelby County for Representative Pearson, because what we know, what the evidence shows is that they are never going to let up, go let up for their communities and what their communities need. And their communities are responding in kind. And as someone who grew up in Shelby County, Tennessee, you better believe that the energy will be there for Representative Pearson, just like it is for Representative Jones right now. Can, can, can we go back to Mark? Mark's in the building at this point. Mark, um, is Mark there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Mark. I'm Mark, here. what is the mood in the building? What's going on? Well, uh, not everyone uh, is inside the building. A few people, a few family and loved ones, a few, a number of supporters are here from around the country. So we're just all waiting to escort him upstairs. Um, it, it's really a, a, a serious mood. This is, hey, this is, uh, this is big. Uh, this is uh, historic. Uh, you've not seen anything like this since the National Street Movement. When we were on at, at the Metro Council hearing, and I'm going to switch my camera so you all can see some of the activity as the troopers are gathering, I guess, for the escort. Um, when we were at the Metro Council building, uh, uh, Gene, that has been renamed Diane Nash Plaza wow. after the black woman uh, who was a student at Fisk University right. and who led the Nashville student movement. Just as a member of Clark Memorial United Methodist Church, which is the church of my childhood in Nashville. The Nashville Student Movement was organized at Clark Memorial. Wait, United are they Methodist singing church. now? Are, so are, they, are so they singing? Blood, yes. 
This is very much like the student, uh, the student movement of the 1960s. They're singing this little light of mine. This is something I don't think we've seen in modern America, certainly not since the 1960s. Um, Eugene, what's your view of this? This reminds me of Taylor Branch, Eyes on the Prize. Oh, absolutely. This is this is a scene from the civil rights movement of my youth. Um, my youth was not in Tennessee; it was in South Carolina. But uh, but th these are the kinds of scenes we saw, and I, I can't re-emphasize uh, re re the fact enough that. The Tennessee Republicans created this moment. They created, uh, they, they drew all this attention. They created uh, these two political stars uh, by unfairly and undemocratically uh, expelling them for expressing their, their views, their democratic views on gun violence. And so they have only themselves to blame. As Mark said, um, they lit a fire, but they didn't want all that smoke. Um, what do you think is going to happen, Juanita? Um, like, are we going to see more kinds of expressions of this sort? I mean, are we, is this a third civil rights movement for the United States? I sure hope so, because let's be real, the times call for it, and not just on gun violence reform, but as it relates to reproductive health care, protecting our basic right to vote. All of these issues are at play right now, and they affect a whole swath of the, the general public and the American populace. And so I think it's critical to see this level of fervor energy and support across the board and but because the other fear here is that just like uh, representative jones and representative pearson were expelled from their chamber i fear that that could be another trend that we mm -hmm. see from republican supermajorities in state houses across the country especially as more and more legislation gets put forth that is harmful to demographic groups whether that is again focused on black lgbtq aapi or indigenous communities or women and so i think it's important important to to set this tone and set this explicit rebuttal in this response that we're seeing in Tennessee that no these representatives will not go quietly away they will not disappear and they are not going to behave how their um, the white Republican legislators who expect expelled them ex expect them to behave instead they're going to stand firm they're going to continue to fight for the issues that matter to them and their constituents because that's what it comes down to it comes down to representative representing the people and forth that is harmful to demographic groups, whether that is, again, focused on black, LGBTQ, Republican legislators who expect expelled them, ex expect them to behave. Instead, they're going to stand for AAPI or indigenous communities or women. And so I think it's important to, to set this term. They're going to continue to fight for the issues that matter to them and their constituents, because that's what it comes down to. It comes on and set this explicit rebuttal in this response that we're seeing in Tennessee that, no, these representatives are down to represent representing the people in the most authentic and candid and clear way will not go quietly away. They will not disappear and they are not going to behave how their um, the white republic is possible. And that's what we've seen from Representatives Jones and Representative Pearson. I think we have another guest joining us to weigh in on this. Um, I will just sort of add to your point, Juanita, I've been saying this all week long. We don't get an outcome like this with the expulsion of two members of the state legislature without a gerrymandering state legislature and the person who I think is best equipped to tell us about how all of these things connect back up to the Supreme Court is senior editor and legal correspondent for Slate Dahlia Lithwick who is joining us now um, she is Dahlia what do you think here like what's going on like how does this all connect back to the Supreme Court and gerrymandering seems like it's all interconnected yeah, there's, there's kind of a big everything everywhere all at once energy, Melissa. It feels like you can't watch this without understanding that the U.S. Supreme Court, through a handful of rulings, whether it's Citizens United, Shelby County, Rucho, 
uh, Urbanovich have pretty much constructed a world in which super majorities in states that tend to be 50-50 state are nevertheless states that have these gerrymandered super majorities. And those super majorities are absolutely immune from shame, immune from political pressure. They seem to be immune from the popular voice or polling numbers. So I think what we are seeing now can be directly connected back to a very, very long effort by this conservative supermajority at the U.S. Supreme Court to replicate itself in some sense in state houses around the country. Right, let's let's listen in for a minute, Dalio. But we stand as witnesses that truth across the earth shall rise again. So we thank you for Representative Justin Jones. Thank you for restoring him to his rightful place yeah. to speak on behalf of the constituents yeah. of District 52. Yeah. So now God give him wisdom, yeah. give him peace, and give him power so that the world will know that justice has rolled down like waters yeah. and righteousness like a mighty stream. Yeah. Amen. Martin Luther King as Justin Jones holds his placard for the state legislature and prepares to re-enter the chamber. He is flanked by Gloria Johnson, who, of course, was the third member of the Tennessee Three. She was not expelled from the state legislature. She survived by a single vote, but she is here accompanying her colleague, Justin Jones, back into the chamber from which he was expelled just a few days ago. This is a dramatic return to the chamber for Justin Jones. And as everyone has reiterated, it is a triumph of democracy over the will of a supermajority. Folks, he's about to enter, uh, enter the room. Uh, they're making arrangements for him to actually walk into the chamber. So this will be a, uh, this will be a triumphant moment. Most certainly. Love you, brother. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. This is beautiful. God is good. So truth crushed to earth will rise again. That is what we know. That is what we believe. And that is what has happened. Justin is a is a minister himself and a minister of the gospel. And as I said, a member of Park Memorial, he was a Vanderbilt divinity, a Fitz graduate where the student movement was. There were four colleges that Gene remembers, Fisk, Meharry, Tennessee State, American Baptist College. Justin came back, Justin, gotcha, okay. Justin came back to Fisk and he has resurrected, uh, he's resurrected this movement. Uh, Gloria Johnson is here. Gloria, you're live on MSNBC if you want to say a word or two. Uh, well, we've got one back and I'm getting up. Things are, things are moving in the right direction. We need these two young men's voices so badly in Tennessee right now, and I'm just so excited that I believe it's going to happen for both of them, and we're here to fight. We're here to fight gun violence and um, to make sure that our children are safe in our community and make sure that everyone's safe in our community Amen. without gun violence. The Tennessee Three is going to stick together, right? Uh, we're sticking together. It's the Tennessee Three. Gloria Johnson, uh, folks, as we await, uh, these are, this is the door, this is the chamber. And we're awaiting uh, the, um, the opening um, of the chamber as, uh, as Justin will be, will be allowed in. If you're just tuning in to MSNBC, this is live footage of Justin Jones, who has been reinstated to the state legislature in Tennessee. The Nashville Metro Council has voted to reinstate him. He is processed with a group, a multiracial coalition of supporters who have flanked him as he's walked into the state legislature, preparing to retake his seat in that body, a body that expelled him in a 72 to 25 vote just a few days ago. He is holding his placard, showing his placard to the crowd. That is the placard that he will put on his desk when he rejoins his colleagues in the state legislature representing the metropolitan Nashville area. This is an area that is one of the most vibrant metropolitan areas in Tennessee. It's an incredibly multiracial area. Lots of minorities live here. It's a major metropolitan area with lots of industry. And again, Justin Jones has been very clear. He wants to represent all of the individuals in Nashville and their interests and one of their court 
issues is fighting against the gun violence that has scarred their community, um, never more so than in recent weeks, with the Covenant shooting at that Nashville school. So he is waiting to retake his seat. He's flanked by Gloria Johnson. She is another one of those three legislators who was threatened with expulsion from the chamber. She was not expelled. She survived by just one vote last week. But she is here as an ally for her colleagues, and she's vowed to continue working with Justin Pearson and Justin Jones to fight for the people of Knoxville, Nashville, and Memphis, all major metropolitan areas in Tennessee. This is it, folks. This is it. This is it. It's happening right now. This is it. Being told this is it, the moment's about to happen, the doors are opening, and Justin Jones is re-entering the chamber at the Tennessee State Legislature. To tremendous applause. Thompson, but we still have Eugene Robinson and Juanita Tolliver. Juanita, what does this moment mean for you? I am ecstatic. I just want to continuously say this is the only appropriate outcome for Representative Jones. I want to see the exact same for Representative Pearson. And honestly, I hope the people of Tennessee are watching this in real time. I hope they're seeing these images. I hope they're seeing all the steps from the Nashville Metro Council to this walk back to the State House to this entrance to the to the floor of the State House because we understand that Republicans in this country don't want history told in the way that it actually happens. And so this is a historic moment in the state of Tennessee that shows that the people will not back down. The voters and constituents of Justin Jones in this scenario showed up just like he shows up for them, and they made sure this happened. The city council showed up mm -hmm. and made sure it happened. And this is the only thing. The only way I hope that this also turns out for Representative Pearson as well, because the disrespect, the racism, the harm, emotional and mental and otherwise that that Representative Jones and Representative Pearson experienced in the past 10 days demonstrates how important and critical this moment is. And again, I just hope the people of Tennessee are watching this in real time so they understand the gravity of this moment and the power of their voices in pushing back against what we know to be a Republican supermajority that is largely white in the state house in Tennessee and what can happen when they stand behind two black men, two young people who are duly elected officials and their constituents deserve their representative every single day, no matter what this Republican supermajority says. Justin Jones with his fist raised in the air. You have been watching his triumphant return to the Tennessee State Legislature, which expelled him just a few days ago. I want to thank my guests, Eugene Robinson, Juanita Tolliver, Mark Thompson, and Dahlia Lithwick. We are going to take a break right now, but we will be right back.